Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered once again lets us fight on the plains of Mars as a member of the rebellion group, the Red Faction. It's been nearly 10 years since the game was first released, but now it's back and looking better than ever. It's still not perfect, and you can still tell that it's an older game, with some rough looking textures and stiff animations in the cutscenes, but with some enhanced lighting and shadow effects, the Red Planet once again has some impressive things to see and do. It's chaotic, it's explosive, and it can be a lot of fun, but unfortunately it does still come with its fair share of problems. The game is all about pushing back the armies of the EDF by completing missions, side missions, and generally causing mayhem to lower their control and to liberate all six areas of the map, one sector at a time. There isn't much variety in what you have to do, with only six different types of side mission, but that's not to say that they're not all fun. Whether you're rescuing hostages, defending an area, or driving a vehicle back to base within a given time limit, all of these tasks play out well. Although, with most of them not having a checkpoint system, failing can lead to some pretty frustrating moments of having to do entire tasks again. With the word gorilla in the title, you may think that you'll be sneaking into bases, planting bombs and then getting out without being noticed, but stealth is the last thing on this game's mind. Okay, I'm at the base. Avoid the guards if you can. If alarms go off, they'll launch the gunships. Stealth is not exactly my style. It plays out more like a bull in a china shop. Mindless guns blazing all around, swarms of enemies falling to your varied set of weapons. Before going in, you can choose three guns to bring along, and all of them will slightly change how you attack. And as you play on, more and more will be unlocked for you to try and aim towards buying. As you complete missions, the morale of an area will increase, encouraging more civilians to join in, ending up with small-scale wars going on around you. And then, of course, there's the thing that the series is known for best. Destructibility. The Geomod 2 engine gives the ability to blow up pretty much anything and everything that you want, so long as it's man-made. This makes environments feel more realistic, as you see it changing around you as every explosion has an impact on the battlefield. Walls and buildings crumble uniquely depending on where they're hit, and it gives you a freedom to think outside of the box and to figure out new ways to get to your enemy. Each demolition can be treated like a puzzle, with you figuring out the precise locations to plant explosives to break weak points and bring structures tumbling down, each with careful planning. Although, to be honest, it's more likely that you'll just end up covering a whole building with more bombs than a human could possibly carry and then blow the whole thing up until there's nothing left but dust. It makes other games feel shallow in comparison, when all they do when a grenade is thrown indoors is make a few black marks on the wall. There is a story that trickles out every now and then in the odd cutscene, but for the most part, the gameplay comes first. Even mission briefings are told through a tactical map and an audio log, although unfortunately this does result in you never really getting attached to any of the game's characters. Even the main character, Alec Mason, hardly has anything close to what you'd call a personality. The story is so simple and so basic that it almost has a certain kind of charm to it. It's always clear what's going on and why you're doing what you're doing, but things do move along at such a breakneck pace that very little time is given to building the world or building strong characters. The story is very much just a skeleton to hang the gameplay off of. Making Mars into an interesting place to explore can't have been easy, as there's only so many shades of red you can use before things start to look repetitive. But each of the six sectors do feel different from one another. And it's also worth mentioning that it would have been easy to just stick a bunch of moon buggies on the map and call them your vehicles, but instead there's clearly some creativity to the design of the different cars. As well as the main game, included in the remaster, you also get the DLC prequel, which puts you in the role of a Martian marauder, and actually has a more interesting story that's better told than that of the main campaign. Plus there's always the multiplayer mode, as well as the Wrecking Crew minigame, which lets you show off your demolition skills. There may not have been a huge demand for Red Faction Guerrilla to be remastered, but the game certainly has its fans, and it's great to see that there's still a bit of life in the franchise. Now all we need is a remake of the original. As always, thanks for watching.